This is Judge Joe Brown, and we're listening to We All Be News. News Free Dixie for the 21st century. Good evening, family. I'm talking to you live from a spot live for me right now because I'm recording. I'm actually at the spot, an uh, African burial ground, where it's said that General Gabriel, or some people known as Gabriel Prosser, uh, was executed on October 10th, 1800, and is currently buried. This spot, not too long ago, maybe 10 years ago, was a parking lot. But it took some brave blacks in the community to reclaim this for the ancestors. So this is a large burial ground. But the reason I want to talk to you today, I want to talk about the Nat Turner movie, Birth of a Nation. Like I've been reading a lot of things, interesting things online about Nat Turner, Birth of a Nation movie. And I am not in agreement with some of the assessments. First and foremost, you should never depend on a movie to tell your story or our story or his story. A movie is a form of propaganda. You should never depend on a movie to tell your story. It's propaganda, it's art. Artists meant to inspire, to anger, uh, to influence, to, you know, a lot of things. But art, like Picasso said, is a lie that makes us realize truth. But they said, how could you put 31 years of living into just two hours? So you're not going to be able to tell everything that happened in Nat Turner's life. Matter of fact, we don't know too many things about Nat Turner, to be honest with you as far as his real historical quote unquote life is concerned. But what we do know is that he led one of the, the largest and most successful slave insurrections in the history of America. Now people might debate, was it really successful? I would say yes, it was successful. Yes, he paid with his lives. Yes, a lot of black folks were killed in retaliation, but it made the power structure rethink. And also it planted seeds for other generations to come to answer the call of liberty or death. So, with that said, a lot of controversy around the Birth of the Nation movie. Uh, the, you know, this is an answer back to the D.W. Griffith 1915 Birth of a Nation movement or uh, movie, which led to the rebirth of the Ku Klux Klan in Stone Mountain, Georgia in 1915. The original Birth of a Nation movie was based on the novel written by Thomas Dixon known as The Klansman. Thomas Dixon was a classmate, a college classmate of Woodrow Wilson, who became the future president, or who was the future president of the United States, the former president of Princeton University, and a son of Virginia. He actually screened the original Birth of a Nation in the White House and said it was like uh, writing history with lightning. Lightning. And these are saying there was a lot of over-exaggerations in the original Birth of a Nation, uh, the birth of the nation, the original one was about white manhood protecting white womanhood. You know, it talked about how the South lost the war, how when Reconstruction came and black folks took over. Very exaggerated stuff. So it put the Klan in a very heroic light. So, fast forward to the 2016 version of Birth of a Nation. Nate Parker is the director and star in this one. And it talks about the uh, Nat Turner insurrection of 1831 in Southampton, Virginia. Before this came out, there was a lot of controversy uh, concerning Nat Parker from his youthful past. Uh, he was allegedly accused of rape. And although he was acquitted or found out guilty in court, this has caused a firestorm of controversy. The movie Birth of a Nation, which he wrote, produced, directed, whatnot, not, uh, was a hit at the Sundance Film Festival. Uh, it actually made history when it was awarded a $17.5 million uh, distribution contract from Fox. Although Byron Allen, the uh, black comedian and entertainment mogul, offered uh, Nate Parker $20 million, he turned down the $20 million and accepted the $17.5 million deal from Fox. And um, so, okay, so Nate Parker be doing movies for about 10 plus years and movies, uh, TV and all this stuff. He was a hit in the great debaters. There's a couple things. Um, but now, all of a sudden, 
as this movie is getting some type of acclaim and Oscar buzz, they want to put out these rape allegations and bring this up, bring up the old ghosts. And um, so they've been taking a hit lately in the social media realm and then mainstream media realm. Uh, people are not satisfied with his answers to the questions of what he did to the lady or did not do. Only him, the lady who is now deceased, he committed suicide in 20, uh, 2012, and his co-writer know the truth of what happened that night, uh, back in 1999. But my thing is, is what like Clarence Thomas talking about doing the Anita Hill stuff. We, you know, they was doing this stuff back in 91, Clarence Thomas and Anita Hill. Talk about it was a high tech lynching and what's happening to him. And basically Nate Parker is being lynched and because he's being lynched, the movie, the art that he produced, his passion project has suffered. People were told to stay away the first weekend, the opening weekend of The Birth of a Nation. From my understanding, it has made less than $8 million in his first uh, weekend at the box office, which is not good considering that the movie had a lot of Oscar buzz. Like people say the movie ain't that good, if I read the reviews and all this stuff. Okay, how can y'all go from the movie not being that good or the movie being like an Oscar t contender? This movie had been screened at the Sundance and all these other places now all of a sudden it's not even good enough to really be a, a straight to dvd release how is that so well like brother malcolm said to paraphrase brother malcolm x the media is the most powerful force on the face of the planet it makes your friends your enemies and your enemies your friends make your friends your enemies and your enemy your friend so with that said um i saw the movie on friday I thought it was very powerful. I thought it was real good. I did, you know, but it's just my one opinion, like LeVar Burton used to say on Reading Rainbow, don't just take my word for it, you know, so go see it for yourself. As I started reading the reviews and the criticism of the movie, I thought they fell very short. For the reason, the point of, when I read the interview, people said it wasn't historically uh, accurate. It's a movie. It don't supposed to be historically accurate. Sometimes Hollywood or Hollywood will make a movie and they say it was based on a true story. And the only thing truthful about the movie would be the name of the of the person who is in the lead. That's about it. But I mean, people gotta understand the games that are being played. Nat Turner has, has a long history of being disrespected by the white power structure. Even when he died, they took it so far as to basically destroy his body. Now recently I just learned that his family received his skull that was kept in white folks' families for generations. This is how sick these people are that do these things. Because lynching is a form of sex magic. Lynching is a ritual. It's a sexual ritual. When you have lynchings, you have the black body violated by white supremacy. They'll cut off the penis, cut off the eye, you know, just cut off everything and save them as souvenirs. White folks made death scenes of black people, these black death scenes, postcards. Dr. W.E.B. Du Bois, the first black person to get a doctorate from Harvard University, when he was teaching down in Atlanta, he walked past the shop They had the remains of Sam Holmes, a black man from Georgia who was lynched for defending himself against his white employer who was cheating him out of his money. And when he came to try to get his proper payment for his work, he was attacked by the white man and killed the white man in self-defense. So they cut up his body. It's like, imagine going to Walmart and you, you walk past human bodies, body parts, right, for sale. This was how America was 100 years ago, you right? They were selling black folks body parts as souvenirs and keeping them as heirlooms to pass on from family to family. So the family of Nat Turner, his survivor family, surviving family actually got his skull back recently. And a lot of it probably had to do with the recent publicity from the new Nat Turner movie. But you think about, there's a book called The Confessions of Nat Turner that was basically supposed to be in the words of Nat Turner as he wait to be uh, killed by the state. That came out back in the time of Nat Turner's uh, era. You fast forward to 1960s, white man named William Styron writes a book called The Confessions of Nat Turner. This come out at the time of the black power movement of the African-American civil rights movement. So you gotta think about it. Nat Turner has always been a perennial hero for black people. He always been this like sacred cow. 
So you look at, you know, the fact that the 1831 version of the confession of Nat Turner really did cause a stir. And you look at, you know, he went from him being a revolutionary uh, to being compromised with the 1960 version because William Styron in that book claimed that Nat Turner was a homosexual and that he craved white women. So he said, oh, he's a homosexual, but also he craves white women. And actually, William Styron was encouraged by James Baldwin of all people to write this book, which is very interesting. But such is a way, I'll, I'll, I'll just people look into this, because you got the internet, look into all the things I'm saying. Because we've been told I trust any black man when it comes to anything. But like Brother Malcolm said, only a fool will let the let their edu let their enemies, only a fool will let their enemies be the primary educators of their children. So, I say I'll just say that Nate Parker, a birth of a nation, was doing an answer back to D.W. Griffith's A Birth of a Nation. Several years after D.W. Griffith did his Birth of a Nation, the great Oscar Michelle actually did his answer back to A Birth of a Nation called Within Our Gates. You can probably find it online. Look at that movie as well. Now I know I'm getting off the beaten path. I know all this stuff I'm talking about went wrong. You just, just overwhelming us with this stuff. But here's the thing, the point I'm trying to make. When I saw the reviews about A Birth of a Nation, the new one, The Birth of a Nation, the new one, People like Sister Leslie Alexander, I read what she said, a uh, very well respected historian and other people were saying we're not historically accurate. Here's the thing, it wasn't supposed to be historically accurate. I mean, it, it was not supposed to be historically accurate. It's a movie, it's a propaganda piece. It's a piece that was made in order to incite something, in order to, to promote certain ideas. To me, the birth of a nation is about encouraging black alpha males to rise up and protect black women once again let me repeat the new the birth of a nation that came out in 2016 is about the rise and the need for more black alpha males to step up and be willing to die for their women and their family just like the original birth of a nation was about the sons of the South, the white sons of the South rising up to protect their white women from from from, from darkies and niggas that want to rape them. The birth of a nation, the original one, was about white manhood, the white alpha males standing up to protect their way of life, their white women and their family. That what he was answering back to. You know, think about right now, we just lost Darren Seals, the brother out of Ferguson, the St. Louis activist, who was a black alpha male, who was critiquing and criticizing the Black Lives Matter movement because it was not putting black people first. In his words, like, not in his words, but it was not putting black pain first. Everything came before black pain. Like you said, you go to the Black Lives Matter website, there is no mention of black males when it comes to the black family. There is no mention of black man, black father, black male on that website. Yes, there is mention of black women, children, uh, LGBTQ people, but there is no mention of black men. And what people don't understand, what made the 60s, the civil rights movement in some ways very successful, was the holy trinity, the black man, woman, and child. It was the black man, woman, and child working together that made some of the changes in this society. But this society knows that when you divide the black family, that's how you keep white power in place. When you, but when black folks unite, white power doesn't have a chance, a snowball chance in hell to succeed and to hold on. So this is what we gotta understand. Nate Parker was answering back to D.W. Griffith. He wasn't trying to please all these black history historians and whatnot. He was trying to answer directly back to what D.W. Griffith put out 100 years ago. Same way, if you look at David Walker's The Appeal to the Colored Citizens of the World, he was answering back to Thomas Jefferson and white supremacy. Please, if you have not done so, please read David Walker's The Appeal to the Colored Citizens of the World. Because he was killed for writing the words, because your words create worlds. 
David Walker was from Wilmington, North Carolina. This is the same place that Michael Jordan, Michael Jeffrey Jordan, arguably the greatest basketball player, grew up in Wilmington, North Carolina. There's a place in Wilmington called Cape Fear. You know, the movie, y'all know the movie Cape Fear. What y'all don't know about Cape Fear is that the white power structure would take the strongest black alpha males, kill these guys, humiliate them, break them down, chop their heads off and put them on poles. So when you're coming through the harbor, you actually see the impaled heads of black men on sticks to be served as a warning for black men and black people in general, but black males, black alpha males to know their place. So Nat Turner is like another General Gabriel. As a matter of fact, it's interesting because when General Gabriel was killed in October of 1800, Nat Turner was actually born October 2nd, 1800. The same month that General Gabriel, or some people known as Gabriel Prosser, was assassinated by the state. And probably maybe buried somewhere where I'm standing. So I, I just want to say all this say, we got to start looking at things in a very critical eye. Why did all this stuff come out now about Nate Parker? Because people already knew about this. You know, but why is it, was it a way did, I mean, did Fox feel like the movie wasn't strong enough? That's why they had to put this out now? Who put this out? Who benefits? And really, quite frankly, in the birth of a nation, the original one, there were some very valid scenes. You know, it was one scene where a black man was allegedly trying to rape a white woman. The white woman did not want the black man to touch her at all, so much so that she was willing to jump off a cliff not to be touched by a black man. When in truth for the reality, like Ida B. Wells, Barnett, discovered in investigative journalism, a lot of these men were being lynched because they was uh, sleeping with white women, but the white women wanted to sleep with them. She found that out through her investigative journalism. They ran out the South for that, among other things. Point out the fact that white women have always desired the black man. <laughs> so it is what it is. And it was consensual. So now, you know, you look at the new birth of a nation. I think Nate Parker did a, a masterful job of suggesting rape without showing rape. And they're not giving credit for that because really, it's valid in some ways, but it's more poetic. I think people wanted a Nat Turner to be like well, something that, you know, Nate Parker, Nat Turner ain't gonna be Quentin Tarantino's Nat Turner. I think people was expecting a Quentin Tarantino treatment of the Nat Turner story by Nate Parker. But he went more of a poetic way in terms of like he was more Langston than Tarantino and his treatment of the Nat Turner story. The miracle is the fact that a Nat Turner story was made at all in a system of white supremacy racism. So I'm not gonna be too hypercritical of this artist's vision. I think he did for all intents and purposes, he did a hell of a job. They should be saluted. And I think he had a strong portrayal as the hero of the, of the story. Nate Parker to me is like a young Denzel Washington. Matter of fact, his mentor is Denzel. And I hope that he's surrounded by love and support by the people who love and know him best in this time. Because brother, you did not fail by any means. You succeeded beyond all measure. And that's why they, they coming at you so hard. Because the fact of the matter is, it's like Nat Turner against all odds, you succeeded. You succeeded. So don't be down there out too long, brother. But I just want to encourage people to see the movie for themselves, to also see the original Birth of a Nation movie, to also see Oscar Michelle's uh, version, Answer Back Within Our Gates. It's worth all several hours of seeing all those things, you know? And what else I want to say? What else I want to say? It's so much to say that uh, I'm going to edit some of this stuff out. I know I don't overwhelm people, but I try to do the work I do because I care about my people, I care about our story. But our story needs to be told because black history is better than science fiction or Hollywood movies any day of the week. The truth about who we are, we had a lot of us forgot that we knew what we knew. So it's very important to talk about these things from time to time to promote this stuff. So what I want to say, it's like you go back to Hollywood, you know, Hollywood always had this sex scandal stuff going on. Think about what happened to the, the famous and successful comedian uh, Fetty Arbuckle when he was accused of, of raping uh, a woman who was known as a groupie uh, who ended up dying from complications from 
sicknesses, you know, dealing with an excess of lifestyle. It destroyed his career. Fede Alberger went from being the highest paid uh, entertainer in Hollywood to being the most blackballed. Even though he was found not guilty of the charges against him, it destroyed Fede Arbuckle's career. It's kind of hard for anybody, especially a man, especially a man of color, to survive allegations of sexual assault against women. You could be innocent as all I know what, but there's something about being accused of sexual assault that follows you and can really curtail your career. And I'm really concerned that brother Nate Parker, uh, people want him to apologize. I don't know if he owed any apologies to people if we live in a country that celebrates serial rapists like Christopher Columbus and Thomas Jefferson. You know how insane that is? That, you know, you have people say, we're gonna pardon uh, General Gabriel Crosser, Governor Tim Kaine, because he said, based on the paraphrase where he said, that he was fighting for the same rights that the white folks were fighting for with the American Revolutionary War. And you wanna you wanna pardon uh, Marcus Garvey because he loved his people so much that he wanted to see them free and empowered. Wow, really system? So who's really guilty? The system is guilty. It's insanity to want justice. How can you get mercy from the devil? The devil is not qualified to give you justice. The devil is qualified to give you more hell. So we gotta learn these things. We gotta understand what's going on. It's so important. It is so important that we teach that we teach the children about our heroes and shields that we select the people that we want to honor. That we don't need white power structures to, to give us the validation and vindication. Like Brother Dick Gregory said, I don't need your ignorance to validate my truth. Oh, the truth doesn't need ignorance to be validated. The truth doesn't need your ignorance to be validated. So I would say support the, the Nat Turner movie uh, by any means necessary. Go see it. Make it a church trip. Uh, take everybody need to. And then from that point, start reading about Nat Turner. You know, start looking to things. Start, you know, talking about these things. Because it's important. In the words of Great Duke Elton, we love you madly. Take care.